what is up ladies and gentlemen this right here is Dark Souls and it's gonna be the main featurette of today's Nate Talks because I'm gonna talk about it I've actually gotten back into it well I'll get into that in a bit but first we gotta talk about spies espionage we gotta we gotta we gotta we gotta uh, a a a a a uh, um a wrench in the system that's not the term, but I can't. I was trying to. Th I can't remember. I'm sorry. I'm sorry. I'm a failure. I may as well just shoot myself in the face. But anyway, we we persevere and we move on. And we also don't own a gun, so we can't really do that. And we have no interest in owning a gun. <laughs> anyway, <laughs> can you tell I'm tired and a little kooky? I'm weird. I'm weird right now. I'm sorry. I apologize. It's going. It's going. It's going to pervade this whole thing. I just got done with playing a couple sets of Mortal Kombat, and we're going to talk about that too. But firstly, like I said, we got to talk about spies. People that are hiding in plain sight, watching a brother, and taking his good ideas off him. Mm-hmm. That's right. I said it. I said it. It's not it's not really that. It's just it's just, you know, weird timing. But for those of you that may remember, I recently came back and with Street Fighter. I think it's been like what? Two weeks maybe since that happened, and I said, you know, like I'm gonna start playing Street Fighter an hour night. I have managed to continue doing that. I am somewhat decent now kind of sort of. i haven't hopped online yet because i don't really uh have any interest in walking over there and moving the ethernet cable from the ps4 to the xbox 3 i have no other excuse than that it's not like i don't want to it's not i'm just like yeah I have, i'm gonna use online on ps4 more often and i really i'm too lazy pure and simple i'm too lazy but so for those of you that remember that video i said you know i'm gonna start learning ryu i have no interest in ryu as a character I don't really want to main this dude. Like, there is a list of probably 20 other characters in that game that I would rather play than Ryu. But the simple fact of the matter is, is that I need to learn the fundamentals of the game. I need to learn how to play Street Fighter before I can learn how to play whatever character I intend to main. And Ryu was the character that I thought was the best way to go about that. And now... The new month rolls around, and the new excellent adventures from Gutex and Mike Ross rolls around, and what are they doing? They're going back to basics by using Ryu in Street Fighter, so they can learn Street Fighter. Sound a little familiar? I think so. <laughs> but there's, I mean, come on, let's be honest, they don't know I exist. It's perfectly fine, they will. Oh, they will. <laughs> It sounded moderately serial killerish, but anyway, I just wanted to get past that little joke. So, firstly, actually, no, you know, let's save Dark Souls for the end. Mortal Kombat. Holy shit, the online system is terrible. <laughs> it's really bad. I really can't get over how terrible the room system is. To be perfectly honest, like, I mean, it's a good idea. You know, you can create a room of like a hundred people, and all of those hundred people can just play each other nonstop. You just pick who to play. But you don't know what your connections are with anybody. Because it cycles through one by one as slowly as humanly possible. I should have actually checked to see if there was a button you could press. If there was a button you could press to be like, yo, fuck all these other people that you're trying to find my connection with. Find my connection with this person. If I could do, if that could work, that would be good. I would assume actually, I mean, if I could do that without actually challenging the person to a match. And bringing up the whole, you know, like, okay, you challenge this person. Person has challenged you. And this is the ping and all that shit. Uh, but yet, so my very, fir my very first match, which nobody's going to see. I recorded it. I promptly deleted it right afterwards and started recording a new video right afterwards. Because it was awful. I assumed, I was just assuming that, because somebody challenged me. I was sitting there waiting to see a green bar pop up. A couple had, and unfortunately, they were already in the middle of matches. So, obviously, you can't challenge somebody that's already in the middle of a match. So, I was just waiting for somebody that was available and also had either a two- or a three-bar connection. And then somebody challenges me. And then I was saying it, so, and it showed there was no ping. There was, there was no red bar, yellow bar, green bar. There was nothing. Just nothing. And so, I was sitting there thinking, maybe the game just hasn't gotten to this dude yet. And because it hasn't gotten to this dude's connection, it just can't show me it. So, why not? It's a fucking player match. Who gives a shit? Let's try to play this dude. And so we hopped in and the uh, menu, <laughs> not even the game itself, the character select menu had like half a second of input lag, which is not a good sign. However, prior to that, I had played six matches uh, against three different people and 
the very first one that I played, this actually all of them that I played now that I think about it, but the very first one that I played was obviously the most noticeable because it was my first experience with the game. Of course, I'm going to remember the first experience hopping online. There was like a half second of input delay. And so I was sitting there thinking, oh God, all the stories are true. The netcode is ass. Everything sucks. Everything's going to suck. And I hopped on the, and played and it was fine. I sucked. The netcode was fine. I didn't have no excuses. I just sucked. Um, so I was kind of thinking, you know, okay, this isn't the proper indication. This is the worst it's ever been. But still, it's happened before and I ended up having a fine connection. I can't judge it yet. And so then we hopped into the match. And he was using Goro. And I have never seen a Goro not just mash on that, like, charging forward flailing attack. The AI does it. Online people does it. Everybody does it. So I was thinking, all right, first thing I'm going to do is just jump straight up, do a neutral jump, expecting that charge. And I'll do the hammer pound thing, pound him into the ground, get a full combo, make him hurt. So I jump. I hit triangle at the apex of my jump, because sure enough, this motherfucker coming forward. He didn't use the charge move, but he was coming forward with something. And so I hit two at the apex of my jump, so I could do the little, you know, pound thing, get my ground bounce, get a combo. I got nothing. <laughs> I got nothing. I neutral jumped, landed, and ate a fist straight to my jaw. And so then I thought, okay, let me start blocking. I started holding down the block button. I got hit two more times with non-comboing normals before block went through. It was awful. Oh, God, was I totally mistaken. There was a good, I mean, by far, the worst input lag I have ever experienced in a fighting game. The only way it could have been worse is if it was actually freezing for a second and then it moved forward and then it froze for another second. But that, it wasn't freezing. It was very consistently smooth. <laughs> like, it had a very consistent 1.5 seconds of input lag the entire time. And so when that's, what's the, that's what the problem is, that's why you can't judge a game based on what you see. Because input lag is masked. The only way you can really tell, like, one way you can actually tell is if somebody's using a stick and they're using a microphone like I do. You can hear their button presses. And if, you know, you can hear a vast, an input lag like that, you can hear a very vast difference between when that person presses the button and then when that normal actually comes out on screen. You can see it. So obviously, in a situation such as that, you know, like, oh god, there's a terrible input lag here. There was like a good second between the time of him hitting a button and his character actually doing something. But if you're only watching the gameplay, and you can't hear, like, for instance, most people play Mortal Kombat on pad. Mortal Kombat's not good on a stick. I would never play Mortal Kombat on a stick, and the main reason for that is actually the block button. I don't want to be sitting there having to hold down a button for 50% of the match. Fuck that. Um, but so, yeah, so, uh, you can't really judge input lag because of a situation like that. Because the game still looks smooth. But you feel it. When you're sitting there playing it, you feel it. You know it. But it looks smooth. It looks fine. And that's why I've been called out sometimes before for saying, you know, like, oh my god, this is so laggy. And it was like, it looks perfectly fine. I don't see any problems. Of course you don't. It's input lag. It's not game lag. Like, a connection in modern games today has to be truly atrocious for it to have a noticeable impact on what's happening on the screen. However, again, you can tell if you can hear somebody pressing buttons, you can tell the, how much input lag there is based off of that. Um, but so, yeah, so that was my first match, and it wasn't good. The next two people I played were decent. Um, the next person I played was actually really surprised. Like, it really kind of just goes to show the overall competition level of people online. This dude was, like, I don't know, somewhere in the high 200s of matches won low 50s of matches lost like an 80 percent win rate so it was something like 70 to 80 some of the 70 to 80 percent win record ratio it's a fantastic win record right i'm sitting there you know the game's telling me i got a zero percent chance to win i'm sitting there thinking yo this person's gonna pull out some godlike stuff you know 30 plus percent combos everywhere the only 30 plus percent combo this dude pulled off was x-ray <laughs> it was they were not good uh now great that being said I still went 7-7 seven and seven against him because, like, I am not 
oh my god, I'm not good online. Like, all of my executional efforts, all of my practice is offline. And so, and obviously, you know, when it's all, it's not, like, offline against other people, it's offline against, in training mode, to solidify combos, in, um, uh, single player stuff, whether it's towers, uh, I recently went through story mode, um, which didn't really help me, because there's only, like, one small section with Kotalkan, and then none of the other characters I'm interested in are playable. I actually am kind of interested in Cassie, though, now, because I kind of like Cassie's moveset, so I think I want to try her out a little bit, because I think... The brawler archetype of hers is not great, and that's the one they put you in uh, for story mode. So I kind of want to try her out a little bit, but she's behind Reptile right now. So I got to work on Reptile a little. Actually, no, I need to work on all of my characters online. That's the simple truth of it. Like, it don't matter what I can do offline. Online is a different world. Online is a whole other plane of existence in comparison to offline. And it was, because there's one executional difficulty I'm really having in Mortal Kombat is trying to go from a down back position into doing a forward button, forward move. I continually get the uh, 236 special in its place, and I don't know why I've changed settings. I even, just, you know, for those, remember I talked about the negative edging thing and how I turned it off. I still occasionally, very rarely, but I've still occasionally noticed myself getting negative edge stuff. You know, like, I'll try to do uh, his low sweep. Like, I'll try to do uh, 1 into 2142. Two. I mean, two, yeah, 2142. Number notation does not work with Mortal Kombat. <laughs> Can't do it. Quarter circle back 2. And, because uh, quarter circle back 2 is a low attack. This is low special attack in War God mode. And I'll end up getting his overhead. Because I hit square before it. Very, again, very rare. Does not happen every single time like it did before I turned negative edging off. But it still happens. So, like, you can't even rely on their settings to work. <laughs> That's not a good look for that game. And so, I am really... I'm just having... I, the executional difficulties I had, which I had thought I had fixed. That I figure out the timing of so I can ensure that I get the forward whatever button instead of getting the down... Uh, for special, which is unsafe and just gets me punched in the head and nobody wants to get punched in the head in Mortal Kombat. It hurts a bit. Um, I keep getting that. And, I, you know, I thought I had fixed it. And then I hop online and I'm getting it constantly. Non-stop. And it got me punished a lot. I lost a lot of games that I should not have lost because I missed punishment opportunities. And then I got punished because, you know, a move came out that is extremely unsafe. So, it's definitely, you know, you just got to learn the game. If you want to play online, you got to learn online. You cannot learn offline. It's not going to work out. That's my experience anyway. We'll see how it continues on in the future. But, uh, yeah. <laughs> Shout out to the guilty guy for being the first person I played that actually does combos, though. <laughs> like, no joke, before I played him, the best combo I saw from anybody was jump in into down two, which I believe is like a universal. It's not really an uppercut. But it's kind of like a rising attack, and you can use it as a pretty decent anti-air, and it does like 12% damage raw. I think it's pretty much the highest damage normal that any character has access to. And it's universal. But yeah, prior to fighting him, I didn't fight anybody that had any combos. And then I fought him, and it was a whole new world. Especially Melina. 35% combo off an overhead with no meter. That hurt. Granted, the overhead's not great. Like, it's definitely reactable. Like, he used, uh, I can't remember if he used four characters or three, but I know Scorpion, Aaron Black, Melina was how it went. And, uh, Aaron Black has a really fucking fast overhead. Like, it's Scorpion, I started reacting to the overheads. Melina, I started reacting to the overheads. Aaron Black, I didn't block the overhead one goddamn time, except for when I was accidentally blocking high. I never once intentionally blocked that motherfucker's overhead. And it leads into damage. So, yeah, I got, I you know, it's there's a lot of work to do. Oh, that's another thing. Because, I like I said, I went through story mode. I am very surprised. Very, very surprised that they went through the... I mean, now, granted, it could just be palette swap stuff. And I just don't know enough of the game to recognize that, like, these characters are using the same normals as other characters that are already in the game. But how they have multiple characters in story mode that you can fight against... But that don't exist in the game. Like, you can't pick them. Baraka, Rain, uh, 
is Tanya her name? Except she's a DLC character because I downloaded the patch and now you can see the DLC character. Predator is a DLC character? Really? <laughs> like, I have to admit, using Freddy, Jason, now Predator as uh, DLC characters is fucking weird, man. I don't get it. I don't like it. I would rather have characters that belong in a game. I don't really like the cameo shit. Soul Calibur 4 was okay because, like... Well, they picked good characters, really. <laughs> That's really all it was. They picked... Like, really solid characters for each platform. Hihachi was probably the worst one in Soul Calibur 2. Spawn was fucking awesome. I used Spawn. I really enjoyed him. And Link was a great choice for the Nintendo version. And then they had all the Star Wars guest characters in Soul Calibur 3. Eh, that one was iffy. <laughs> I gotta admit, that was, that's another... That was actually one that I was just going, eh, Not really liking that. But anyway... So I digress from all that stuff. I mean, you know, NetherRealm Studios is just they make a bunch of decisions that if I was in the position to make that decision, I would not make it. Uh, numerous things about the game. Throw text for one of them, how you cannot... How, number one, I mean, like, the fact that you have to guess on a throw tech about whether they're going to throw you forward or backwards and not just tech this throw is ridiculous. It basically turns throws into a 50-50 mix-up. Unless I completely misunderstand and you can press either button to tech a throw. But I am fairly certain that like if they if they want to do a uh, like a forward throw on you, you have to tech with one. And if they do a back throw on you, you have to tech with two. That might be switched around. I don't know 100%. But as far as I'm aware, that's how the throw system works. And that's ridiculous to me. Because again, it turns throws into a 50-50. You can dodge a throw by just holding down back. Because if you don't... If you are holding down... So your character is ducking, throws will whiff, but not if you're holding down and blocking. But if you're not holding down the block button, you actually can't be thrown while ducking. But I would rather get thrown than eat a low into, you know, probably like a 30, 40, 50% combo, depending upon the character and the meter available and all that shit. So, I mean, you know, there's just, there's a lot of things in Mortal Kombat that work against it uh, if the intention is to turn it into a viable tournament experience. That's not... It has not hit it yet. Injustice was close. I think Injustice was the best uh, tournament game that NetherRealm Studios has made. And, uh, shockingly, the biggest reason for that is because there wasn't a block button. Cross-ups. Oh, God, cross-ups. Whew! I mean, number one, cross-ups aren't even really a thing, so they're not really worth going for. I don't understand why people get hit by cross-ups. To be perfectly honest, I really don't. Because you don't have to change your block. You just keep holding the block button, and yet people get hit on Wake Up from by cross-ups. And it really confuses me. But it's the fact that there are no like cross-up normals in the game. There's no jump and medium kick. There's no, you know, there's no jump tatsu cross-up kind of shit. You have to hope and just cross your fingers that your character spins around in midair and you do a cross-up move versus, you know, having a move that just, if you're jumping over them, it'll hit them. That really, like, I have basically just committed myself to never doing crosses with Kotokan, because for whatever reason, maybe I just don't understand the system well enough, but just for whatever reason, my K, he doesn't turn around very often, and so, you know, I'm completely whiffing moves while trying to maintain pressure, and that's not, I can't do that, especially in a game as mash-happy as Mortal Kombat. But anyway, I'm going to stop talking about Mortal Kombat now. We'll move on to Dark Souls. Just give me a second. So I got back into Dark Souls. I got back into Demon Souls first. Obviously, I've talked about this a bit. But after I finished Demon Souls, I got back into Dark Souls. You can actually see my, uh, my character. Hang on. Right there, this dude. He is on New Game Plus Plus now. And as you can see... I got there. I got through two playthroughs in the time it took me to get through the first one of this guy. That one's a little deceptive. There's probably an additional like hour and a half, two hours on him because I did go through a little bit of New Game Plus Plus with him. Um, but yeah, so this is the play. As you can see, they're all naked. Because <laughs> I wanted to uh, keep them all with the fast roll. But anyway, so I, as you can see, I've been playing a lot. I kind of I played through the first time and I was kind of like, yeah, all right, I think I'm done. And then I looked up achievements and I was like, you know what, man? Let's try to play through this again. Now I have a lot of weapons to choose from. And let, you know, let me just toy around with some shit. Let me make a bunch of stuff. And so now I'm kind of committed to platinum. Not actually platinuming the game because there is no platinum on the Xbox version. But, you know, 
and getting all of the achievements in this game. And um, so now I'm actually close. The only thing I need left now is one more Gwendolyn weapon, one more Sif weapon. Uh, I need to obtain all of the miracles, which is going to take another character because this dude has no faith whatsoever. So I can't join the Sunlight uh, Covenant to get all that shit. But so that's something I'm also interested in because I haven't done a faith build yet. I did this guy actually right here. I gave up on him because he was I was designing him to be uh, the big bruiser type character wielding around the biggest weapon a motherfucker can possibly get and just smashing things with them it works very well don't get me wrong I, like, I did not quit because I couldn't do it I quit because it was boring I was because you get the dragon tooth and in Orlando and I was just running around like two hand doing the jumping two hand attack against everything smashing it and, but it's just, it's slow, it's boring, and after playing Bloodborne, I really cannot go back to the slow and boring type of gameplay. I really enjoy Bloodborne too much. Uh, so yeah. But, uh, I don't know why I bought, like, I don't know if there was a special on it, I don't know if there was a deal on it, but I had bought the Artorius of the Abyss DLC a long time ago, but I never played it, because I had only done the one playthrough before the DLC came out. And so, you know, now I actually got to partake in it. Let me just put this one statement out there. Call me can go fuck himself. <laughs> Real talk. I hate that dude. And it's not even that he's hard. Because he's not really that hard. However, if you want to cut that dude's tail off, enjoy your life for like 10 minutes of just running around in a circle and just hoping he will do two attacks. There are two attacks that give you a good opportunity to try and hack at his tail. And if you don't one-shot it off, you are going to have to just, again, circle strafe him with your shield up for like 10, 15 minutes to finally get that stupid thing off. And the and Calamite one-shots you. He does a lot of damage. He one-shot me, at least. Granted, in New Game Plus, kind of everything one-shots you. That's kind of the point of New Game Plus. But in New Game, it was my own fault. I beat the game with 15 vitality. It was not a good idea. Gwen gave me nightmares because I could not figure out the parry timing for him so I had to try to just fight him normally and it took ages to finally get it right like I definitely died the most on Gwen uh Artorius was actually a problem too because like I love the theme of that fight I love the uh environment everything about that fight except the actual action was great but that dude has some ridiculous hitboxes. <laughs> like, he has this attack where he'll spin in midair. He does, like, this mini jump, and he does a forward flip, and then he smashes down. Uh, hit, smashes his sword down. But it's in, like, it's straight. He doesn't, like, do a sweep attack. It's just very straight down. So, obviously, to dodge that, you want to dodge to the side. There were numerous moments where he clipped me with that attack, despite the fact that my character is shown a good like two or three feet completely away from the sword nowhere near the slash but he got buried by it and if you get hit by that attack there is a possibility that he will continue to do it and you can't get up he can do it up to i think the max i've seen him do it is three times in a row if he does it three times in a row i got one shot so like getting clipped by that was so frustrating because it was nowhere near me but it still smashed me into the ground and oh that fight nearly made me lose my mind. Gwen was, but Gwen was by far the worst. It was really, really bad. But, um, see, so I'm, I've actually gotten really good at the game. Like, I can run through almost everything without issue. It's the Ar aforementioned Artorius of the Abyss. You know, the Guardian. Actually, he was really easy the second time around. But trying to learn him the first time around, hoo hoo, he bodied me. That was actually another one where it was really difficult to cut off his tail. And that was the main reason why I had difficulty. And, like, Manus. Because, for those of you that have not played this game, you, it is possible to go through a quest line. I'm not going to ruin it in case anybody might end up wanting to go back to it and hasn't played this before and, you know, blah, blah, blah. Uh, it is possible to do a quest line where it enables you to summon Sif, who is a boss in the normal Dark Souls game. It, is, it makes it possible for you to summon Sif to help you fight Manus. I was insistent upon using Sif. Like, it was the theme of it just the thematic element was just really cool to me i didn't need sif at all sif is actually not that great because he's not aggressive he'll hit like once every minute 
and so he doesn't really pull Manus' attention away from you. He doesn't really do anything to help you. He's not doing a ton of damage. He just, I mean, it's just, you know, if he does get hit, he can take a lot of hits. Um, but ultimately, he's really not that useful. But again, it was just the theme of the theme of the moment. You know, this is really awesome. I really want to kind of just have like that story in my head of me and Sif against Manus. That just seemed really cool to me. So I was insistent upon using Sif. Number one, the summon sign is almost impossible to find unless you know exactly where to go. The first few times I tried to do it, I didn't even find it. I just died before I found it. And then finally I found it. And I kind of got the general idea of where it was, but I didn't get a perfect... Like, now I can just go to it immediately at the start of the fight because it's just a little bit behind you and a little bit to the left. I can go to it every single time now. But those first bits, I died like six times before I even got to summon Sif. So, that DLC caused me a lot of issues. Also, Dark Magic is stupid. <laughs> it's so strong. Whoo, I got one shot by a lot of Dark Magic. Let's throw that out there. But, um... So, I mean, like, I am. I'm having a lot of fun with Dark Souls, which is nice. Because, you know, for those of you that may not remember, may not have watched my original Dark Souls playthrough, it, I would, did not have fun. It was not what I was expecting. It was not... I was not prepared for the style of game, for how it worked, how everything operated how you were expected to play and I did not enjoy myself because of it. Blighttown still sucks. <laughs> I can run through Blighttown now though. Like I know exactly where everything is. I know exactly where I need to go and I can usually get through it without dying now because I know like exactly where to go which is kind of awesome but it also is a testament to how many times I died in that area that I actually know the correct path to utilize. But yeah, so, you know, it's, it's fun to, you know, go back to a game that you thought you didn't really like, and now it's really fun. I'm really enjoying it. So anyway, that's enough from me. You're probably tired of me. My voice is tired. I've been recording for like two hours now. Uh, so, thank you for listening. Hope y'all have a wonderful day. And I need to finish up getting all these achievements, son.